So this is going to be the third installment of the trestle table build. Um, most of this build is going to be showing how I make the breadboard ends on the tabletop as well as the two extension leaves. Now it might not seem like it in the video but I am going to go through this fairly quickly because I do have a very comprehensive video um, on how to make breadboard ends and why you make breadboard ends for tabletops already on my channel. So if this, if going through this is too fast for you, you can always check out that video. But since I have that video, I made that video because I do prefer using breadboards on tabletops. And because it is a very extensive process, I didn't want every single time I built one to be um, a, an extremely large video. Towards the end of the video, I do jump back to working on the base and getting it ready for the rail system. Um, the beginning of this video starts off still um, in the winter of 2021, but towards the end, it's much, much closer to real time. You could even see the walnut cabinet that I uploaded about a month ago in the background, so it's closer to real time. And then, like I said, there should be only one more video, and that will mostly be showing how I um, engineered the sliding mechanisms for the top, as well as putting the final finish on. So this is just a view of the tabletop. I keep these boards rough in order to make them look rustic at the end, but I do try and get them as flat as possible. So there's not a ton of undulation in the top. And it makes doing the breadboards easier as well. So then I like to do one end at a time so that I end up getting the perfect fit because I don't necessarily plan out all the dimensions for these breadboards. So I go through and I rip one edge straight and then um, I could start laying out for the breadboard. So you could see I, I made some rough measurements and then I could use this jig that basically is just two pieces of plywood and your top's gonna be sandwiched in between. This jig makes it so that you can route the grooves on the top and the bottom and they're, they're perfect. If you don't use something like this, it can be really hard to get them to be the right dimension on top and the bottom, in which case you'll have a gap either at the top or the bottom of your breadboard. So I spend a fair amount of time setting all this up, setting the depth for the cuts, making sure that the router is going to track perfectly on this jig. Like I said, it's simply just two pieces of plywood um, sandwiched together. And then that is the initial groove. Everything looks good at this point. And then I could go through, this was a tip from someone watching the channel, to remove the excess instead of using the router, I can just use a handheld planer and trim this down to size. Now I'm going to be cutting the mortises that are going to go in the tendons on this breadboard on my mortising machine and I have a 3 8 inch bit for that. So the tongue or the, the tenon I'm leaving for this is going to be 3 8 of an inch. So that's how kind of all that math figures in. You can see in the background at this in this stage, I'm working on that, that big built-in that I uh, had hanging around the shop. Those are, are parts of it in the background there, just to give you an idea of the timeline of this build. So then I can flip the top over and do the exact same thing. My camera fell over there, but it's the exact same thing and then um, I'm tracing th a three-quarter inch line on there that is going to be the haunch part of my tenon. I'm just pointing out how important it is that this top and this bottom are the exact same distance otherwise you're going to have a, a gap when you go to slide your breadboard on. That's why using a jig like this is such a time saver. So I'm just taking a little bit of material off of the edges so that you don't see it with the breadboard, cutting a little bit of a shoulder and then I go through and lay out all of my pieces. Um, the ideal between uh, cutting these tenons into smaller chunks, about four inches or so based on, on your width, is so that the whole piece doesn't act as one unit. Um, when you go through and cut these into different pieces, they will not be as, as soon as you change the thickness of lumber, the width of lumber, the thinner material is, which is why a lot of times with intricate details people make things out of veneer, um, the less likely that material is to be subjected to seasonal humidity. So by cutting these into smaller chunks, the 4 inch pieces are not going to move as much as a 36 inch piece is kind of the, the thought process behind that. So I rough those out with a jigsaw and then I come in with a coping saw and clean these up. You can cut these out with a coping saw, it's just faster with a jigsaw. 
So then my breadboard is about a four inch piece. I kind of roughed up this material when I was doing the rest of the build and now I'm just making a nice clean edge on my jointing jig. If this edge isn't perfectly uh, square and clean, it won't match your, your surface as well. So in order to, to get um, the, this is going to be cutting the haunch port part of, of the, the mortise because the haunch runs the entire length of the piece. You can see I'm just setting this up. I can't go past um, that second line on my board because that will show on the edge of the tabletop. And then I could just lower this onto the blade once again, three eighths of an inch. So it's a three eighths of an inch dado stack. Now the haunch is in place. Um, the science behind that is to keep the entire joint true. So it can't twist as much if it's just working, um, sitting on those tenons. The haunch will keep the whole breadboard from, from bowing. Then I could clamp uh, the breadboard on there, mark my pieces. I'm extra careful in marking them these days because I have cut the wrong, um, the wrong voids for the mortises before, which is, not a nightmare situation, but you have to redo the entire piece. And then I could go through with my mortising machine and, and remove the material for where those tenons are going to fit into the board. Now this is oak, so the first little bit that you're using on the mortising machine takes a little bit more um, muscle to, to force the bit down, but once you have that first divot in there, going through is pretty easy. And I always make them a little bit wider so that expansion can allow those tenons to move inside this breadboard. This is what keeps the entire top flat, this breadboard, it can't cup, but it also um, hides the seasonal humidity changes. So it's a lot of engineering that goes into a piece that no one ever really sees, only you know that it's there but it will ensure that this tabletop will last for a very, very long time. Anyone who's ever made a tabletop without one of these or has ever seen a tabletop where one of these is made improperly can tell you um, the nightmare scenario of having a top that moves around on you, a top that cracks because the top can't move freely, and there's, there's many other issues that can arise from improperly made, made tabletops and improperly made breadboards. So once I have that side done, I could go through and mark for the other side. I forget the exact length of this, to be perfectly honest. I think it was somewhere around 72 inches. Um, it wasn't a, f a finute dimension. I had a little bit of play with it, but I could go through and mark um, how, how uh, wide the breadboard was gonna be and then how wide the tenon was gonna be. And I can repeat the exact same process on this side. Rip the boards clean. Um, go through and route them and then cut everything. So I obviously don't show that, but this is me that now working on the uh, leaves. The leaves are a little over 12 inches. They're going on each end of the tabletop. I'm using the exact same jig. I just move my spacer block so they're closer to the piece and I could do the exact same thing on the leaves. Obviously this is a little bit of a faster process because they're much smaller. Um, I do not like splitting the aprons of a table in order for it to extend and I don't like splitting the top and I don't think that that's a radical viewpoint. I've watched a lot of videos from master woodworkers on places like YouTube, read lots of articles about it and people in general do not enjoy splitting the the table. It renders it weaker. Um, those full extension slides and those tops, people have problems with them down the line. Um, I just prefer not to do it. So the more common way to attach these, these extensions on a trestle table is to put them on the ends, and that's what I decided to do. So the top is standalone, and then the ends can be added without um, compromising the structure of the actual table top. So, um, like I said, I'm just doing the exact same thing for the leaves. This is the, the piece that's gonna go on the end. The way the math worked out for this one, I only needed three tenons, but exact same process. And I'm going to remove that material, remove the little bit um, for the haunch on the top, and then um, go through and use the mortising machine. So like I said, I had two leaves, so I had to do four more breadboards on top of the table. This is definitely a labor of love, but I've never regretted um, spending the time doing the breadboards. 
let's see what that looks like and then transferring it to the mortise machine and I'm showing you now uh, this is hard to film because there's such deep shadows but you can see what that joint looks like once it's done and then the whole thing can slide into place once again now there is always a little bit of fitting to do with these to get them to sit flush make sure everything fits I usually don't film a lot of that because it can be a little tedious the ones on the breadboards went together really well the tabletop I had a little more fitting to do especially since this is rustic so any sort of bumps and undulations in the material means the routers riding on those bits and you will naturally have high spots and um, have to to hand chisel some of those those bits out so once again this is just the math for doing the other side you can see I have 34 and I believe 7 8 marked on that and that is because those end um, extensions have to be the exact same width of the tabletop so that was basically the breadboards now I'm jumping back to the stretcher for the table um, the original photo had a straight stretcher there was no design to it I decided to copy the design on the trestles blow it up obviously because this is a much longer piece of wood so I just expanded the dimensions and then transferred it to the stretcher now I'm doing this um, this is slower work doing something like this on the table saw but I don't have a functioning bandsaw and the, my jigsaw just does not cut um, just does not cut material very straight especially thicker material like this so I spent the time to set up the dado stack make a bunch of curves that I could clean up and then the curve section I will use the jigsaw and then I could just saw it straight so then in order to do the tuss tenons in here I'm doing I believe a 3 8 inch um, tuss tenon is going to go through this so I'm just drilling a hole all the way through you can see I have this piece clamped safely to my drill press so I'm drilling one hole straight through and then for the tuss tenon you're 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 making your mortise at an angle so for the second hole I am drilling it but I'm only going about a little less than a halfway down because once you get to that point you're going to have to start angling the the um, the mortise hole in order to receive that that angled tenon so this just saves a little bit of time removing some of that material so then I'm going to go through with the same drill bit and and angle it into that that mortise so that I don't have to do a ton of chiseling you can see I have the bit angled there and then I could go through with a chisel and and angle that piece so I had this oak laying around I just drilled a matching uh, tenon for my hole you could see it's as wide as it is on top and then you could see that it tapers down to 3 eighths at the bottom so you can see there's that taper so the hole is smaller at the bottom this will hold that in place and then I could just cut these out and test fit it into into my mortise hole so I just cut these out on the cross with the cross cut sled like I said I had this it happened to be oak and it happened to be the exact dimension so um, there was a little bit of polyurethane on the other side I just sanded it off and once again this did this was the final fit I had a little bit more playing around to do in order to get that mortise to to receive this perfectly but that's basically what that looks like and this just locks everything into place when the table is put back together could see how it'll stick out through the bottom that was the one side I was worried about because that knot was so big but it ended up working out so then at this point I'm gonna add some support rails on the inside of the tabletop um, I had decided how I was going to make the extensions this was influenced a little bit by the fact that that oak extension table I made back in the fall had a little bit of problems with um, wooden slides so I decided to go all metal on the mechanical part so I didn't have to worry about seasonal humidity and changes in the wood and and things fluctuating especially since this is going down south so I've done this before in videos um, I'm going to be putting some dovetails on my aprons in order and then uh, receiving dovetail and tails on the boards in order to put these into place this will this is a little bit of a better joint than a dado and it will just ensure that everything stays true so I'm going through with the straight cutting bit and removing the bulk of the material this was another tip from someone watching the channel instead of just using the dovetail bit um, it's a little a little bit of a strain on the router and the bit to just use the whole dovetail bit so this is a very simple jig I just have uh, a piece that can 
be screwed into the top because you'll never see these screw holes and it fits the bushing that fits into my router. I could remove that material and then this is going back through with the dovetail bit in there and removing the rest of the material. So like I said, it's, it's pretty simple. This makes a really solid joint. And that's what all of those dovetails look like. So then I could take those boards and make the exact same, um, make the joint that I can make the tails on the, the table salt in order to fit. So you can see I have a spacer on the tenoning jig in order to get this over the blade. And I always do a test piece. So this is the final piece after knowing that this is all set up properly. Leaves a little bit of material on the shoulder. This is kind of a sneak peek of the material I'm going to be using for the extensions. It's uh, one inch square tubing and you could see how those rails fit into those dovetails. I did not, I do not have these glued into place yet because there's a little more work to do on them. You could see the tables back together with the stretcher and everything and this is where I'm going to pick up for the final video.